Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, we're going to have, I think we're going to have quite a show today. And there's always been some major concerns about the, um, uh, the, the, the well-being, if you will, of the Portland, Portland area, or if not that Oregon black community. It's, a, it's, it's an issue that's changing. It's constantly changing. And, and there's major concerns about who's going to be basically taking on the baton. I mean, how are we going to get young people in, and educate young people and get them to the point where they can pick up the, pick up the issues that, uh, that are, are major concerns even at this point in time? And actually, we happen to have a, a president who happens to be a, a black American. And, uh, and then a lot of issues are changing, and you start thinking about the opportunities that are there and whether or not, in fact, we're going to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. That's a concern. And as you know, I had uh, done a show with, uh, with my guest today on several shows talking to those major concerns and sort of opening up the doors in terms of what are the problems uh, in that particular area. And I'm talking about the gentleman that's with me right now, Baruti Artery. Welcome, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Glad fine, to be fine, here. Fine. And uh, it's been some very exciting comments in response to the to these shows. But again, it, it's just basically the leadership in, within our community and the concern uh, of the leadership that we've had in terms of their output, et cetera, of that nature. And so, so the uh, it, it's a very important piece. And so, with with, with some of the comments and and the series that we've been we've been having with with um, with Mr. Baruti Artery, we've opened up the door. Uh, it's really not to criticize. It's just the fact of the matter is we just can't do business like this anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been giving us the opportunity to open up these doors and, and help us out with this deal. So hopefully you will look at this from the standpoint of a positive thing and talk to a correctiveness kind of a situation here that we have to deal with. And so that's what we're going to do again today. And hopefully we're going to probably try to subject. We're going to try to cover a number of subjects. Yeah, we, we, we will go into a, uh, the, the reviewing of the three shows that... Um, uh, that we've done before in the past, and in all due respect, the rationale there is that uh, uh, we've been here for quite some time, and all due respect, I've not seen any coverage, any major coverage mm -hmm. from some of the major newspapers, but most important, the African-American newspaper, the Portland Observer, and the Scanner News, and that really is, is a major concern. So we're going to talk a little bit about that also, too. But uh, So I want to go on and welcome uh, him again, and, uh, and we'll just get right on into the show. There's a possibility we might have some questions in the next half hour, but but unless we get everything out, uh, we will, we'll just probably just go on and we'll do it. May, I, here I go again. I'm going to say we may have to do something <laughs> in the future. <laughs> but anyway, first off, well, why don't we, 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 we with the concerns that, that I know that you've had and, and you've expressed to me in many times, and you, you've um, you've identified yourself as a very strong family person, mm -hmm. and I'd like to get I'd like for you kind of give us an update. What have you been doing lately? Well, well, thank you, Bruce. First, again, thank you, uh, Portland Cable Media, for this chance to come back and talk about some of the issues. And I applaud you because when we finished the last show, you said, I'm going to stay on top of this. Yes. I want to track this. I want to have you back. I think it's important that the viewers have an update as to yes. some of these issues and concerns that you raised. Right. Right. Uh, secondly, my family is doing great. I'm feeling very blessed uh, now that it's summertime out here and the kids are out of school. I'm getting a lot more time with my grandkids. Uh, in fact, my oldest grandson returns today from a trip to uh, Georgia where he's been on an engineering uh, field trip uh, visiting schools back there. And he's only 14 years old in wow. the ninth grade. And, really? And, and I'm really proud of him, uh, mm -hmm. especially, as you know, my story, being the first in my family to graduate from college mm -hmm. and my parents having not graduated from high school and to have a 14-year-old grandson who is going to high school and already looking at college and thinking about engineering. Yeah. And, and the other two, uh, full of energy. I chase yeah. them around a couple yeah. of times a yeah. week. It keeps me young and keeps me energetic. Yeah. And, yeah. and Hassan, is, he's, he's doing his dialysis, his health as well, and we're still hoping and praying that he gets his kidney sometime soon. Good, good. And your brother? And Joe, Joe, Joe is I mean, doing Joe, good. I see Joe all the time. Yeah. Right? He's doing good now. Joe's that, out that, there. That Joe's, yeah, yeah, Joe's, uh, he's doing well. He's back to work. Health is good. Just got back from vacation. So everybody's good. I thank you for asking right, that, right. brother. Now, you mentioned, we, we talked about, you talked about family, but that was also, as a result of that, you've always had a major concern about, uh, about young people's progress mm -hmm. and their education and are you taking some of the advantage and some of the things that you've had for your pay, basically giving back, if you will, it, very important. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's very true because of my background and, and as you know, again, having uh, grown up in Compton and coming through a uh, uh, community of not getting a chance to go to college. And, and I came to Oregon to attend college. Uh, my mm -hmm. first plane trip was a one-way trip to Portland to go to school at Linfield College. And as I got education and became a professional, I've always had a passion about giving back to young people because I always felt there are more people like a Baruti R3 out mm -hmm. there. If they just had the opportunity, mm -hmm. they could be successful and be contributing members of society instead of a detriment or drain on society. Mm -hmm. So so when we talked about our show and you first invited me on, it was February. You wanted me to be the Black History honoree. And you mentioned to me then the importance of what we say to our young people. Because yes. as you know, the story that I shared was one I was initially very reluctant to get into mm -hmm. about the political drive-by. Mm -hmm. And you encouraged me along with Greg Benton to say, well, people need to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Tell people the truth. And unfortunately, you and I both know that sometimes truth is the only thing that people exactly. don't believe. Exactly. And so when exactly. we put the truth out there, it did stir up a lot of passion. A lot of young people felt that some of the things I said were educational. Mm -hmm. They learned from it. Uh, it will help them as they go further working in this community. But if there's two things I would say to the young people at this point that's very important, that as you look at uh, this community, we need to make sure that we are holding leadership accountable. That's the most important thing. Because as I look at some of the issues that we deal with in this community, it's tied directly to the small number of mm -hmm. African Americans that we have. When we live in a state with 2% African Americans in the city, is 6% African Americans, uh, within that small number, uh, oftentimes there's damage and hurt being done, and it doesn't get expressed to the larger community because it gets self-contained. And that we find people within that group who are preying on some of the people who are weak, and that's mm -hmm. unfortunate, and, and that does get into some of the political yeah, drive-by. Right, 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 but right. that's the message I'm saying to the young people. Indeed. If anything, I would say you need to speak up, you need to stand up, you need to show up, and you need to not take no unnecessary stuff off of anybody. It doesn't matter what their position is, what their title is, how long they've been in a position, how old they are. There's a uh, there's an issue of what's right and what's wrong. And one of the things I read recently, it said that illusion of freedom, uh, it, it means that's mental slavery. Mental slavery is when you have an illusion of freedom and you trust, love, and defend your oppressor while at the same time they are trying to destroy you. And so we have mental slavery and it doesn't matter, it has nothing to do with black or white, it has to do with what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And Gandhi said it best, and this is, I'll say this to the young people and stop, ignorant people want to punish you for speaking the truth. For, and for being you. Never apologize for being correct or ahead of your time. Speak your mind. Even if you are a minority of one, the truth is still the truth. And so there's a long history. When you look at Gandhi, you look at Dr. King, you look at what our ancestors went through. If we had had people who were weak need to roll over to some of the abuse and the defamation of character, mm -hmm. the threats of lawsuit, mm -hmm. we never would have some of the freedoms we have today. Exactly. So in this community, we have to take a stand. We have to do the same thing, and regardless who the oppressors are, if they black or white. Right. And in fact, unfortunately, some of these black oppressors, they've taken on the characteristics of white oppressors from the past. Mm -hmm. It's just like they're filled with some self-hate, they feel like they have impunity, that they can do damage and do what they want, they're not going to be held accountable, so they use terrorism to strike fear by saying what would happen. So it's no different than the KKK running around in hoods. These <laughs> folks are running around and under the cover of darkness trying to do the same thing. Right, right. You know, so anyway, so right. so yeah, I've got a lot of I'm messages people, for the young, young folks right, and I'm right, going to keep right, talking right, and, right, right, right. and uh, until and so I can't talk anymore. Well, for the benefit of those young people that are out there who maybe not have seen the series before, but also doesn't know anything about your track record, you know, because mm -hmm. your education was so important to you, and all along the way you, you, you've identified mm -hmm. with various achievements. I, I'm just going to share some of those okay. ideas with them. Okay, prior to cons you had a consulting firm at one point in time, Baruti Arthur E. Arthur Reith and Associates, but prior to the consulting firm, uh, uh, you served uh, as a regional director for diversity with Providence Health and Services. Mm -hmm. 17,000 uh, employees. You go deputy executive director for the Portland Development Commission, the PDC. Mm -hmm. That's a huge outfit. Mm -hmm. Director of Housing and Community Service for the state of Oregon. $350 million annual you budget. You heard that. You got my senior citizen card. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Remember that. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you very much. President, 1990 to 1993, and currently co-owner of Coast Industries. Mm -hmm. No longer co-owner, but, okay, but as president. But it was yeah. there, exactly, yes. for sure. Uh -huh. Boise Cascade Corporation, 
in various positions in sales, okay, in marketing, including national product manager, branch manager. I mean, you were there. Boys yes. one of the largest mm -hmm. uh, employers here in this in this state. Uh, again, uh, you graduated from Linville. College, right? With dual major, BA in business and education, right? Correct. Yeah. And also a yeah. secondary education teacher too. You, yeah. Did I you was, teach a little I bit? I was certified. Oh, I did yeah, student certified. teaching, but I had a business degree and a teacher yeah. certificate. And at the time, yeah. I tried to hire in Portland public schools. I couldn't get a job, so I really? took my business certificate and never looked back. Wow! 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 And then there were some other areas that, as far as awards and recognition received, City of Portland Mayor's Spirit of Portland Award. Is that was that under Charlie? Or was that under? Who's that, that was under, under Vera Katz, and mm -hmm. that was because I was part of the group that went back to New York okay. in about 30 days after the 911 mm -hmm. uh, act took place. And as you may recall, this group of people from Portland led by Mayor Katz and Show DeZono, Show DeZono and yeah, some other there. folks was the first large contingent to go back to New York okay. after the uh, plane crash into the towers. And it was to send a message that tourism needs to come and support the city. Right. Good, good, good point. Public Health Hero Award, Multnomah County's Public Health Hero Award. Mm -hmm. Lambert University Living Legend Award, Linfield College Minute of the, of the Decade, Volunteers of America, 100 Stars Award, African American Alliance for Home Ownership Award of Excellence, Portland Trailblazers, 2011 Black History Month Honoree, African American Health Coalition, 2011 Walk Grand Marshal, okay, past community and civic engagements including Board Member of Portland Business Alliance, National Council of State Housing Agencies, uh, board Chair, Urban League of Portland. We talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Co-founder and Chair, uh, Partners in Diversity, African American Alliance, uh, Northeast Community Development Corporation, Vice Chair, member of the Portland Trailblazers Community Advisory Board, trustee, Linville, Linfield College. That, that's still today, right? Uh, no, I did that for about eight or nine years. Okay. I okay. finally gave okay. that up. And you, okay, we talked about your son and, and four grandsons. We talked about that uh, big time. I know you really enjoy that piece. Yeah. But I, I wanted to share that with, with the viewing audience. But this is not just someone you're just sitting here just kind of rapping and whatever. You know, mm -hmm. A lot of times people take those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. oh, even on my end, I get it all the time. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's okay. That's passe. The fact of the matter is, is that it's very, very important that we take a sort of a lead role in regards to the black community. It's very, very important. And it's the kind of leadership that through authority and, and sitting on this show, that's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. you know, all these other cultures have their own leadership, and they're mm -hmm. constantly, uh, the, you got the Jewish community, you got the Hispanic community. Everybody's being very aggressive and assertive, if you will. Mm -hmm. And But the fact is, we've got to take some of that leadership. And that's why he's here on this show, and hopefully you understand where we're coming from. But I, I wanted to make sure that the young people understand what, what, a, what the value, if you will, of an education. The value of an education, and how you can, in fact, be inclusive, in the in the benefits and the, and the, all the accolades, if you will, whether it be finance and this, that, and the other. So get your education; it's very, very important. Get your education, just like mm -hmm. and that. There he is. You've got it right there with him. Okay. Now, now, now that we've gone through the comments for the young folks and whatever, uh, again, uh, why this is why you are here is that. Let's talk a little bit about the media coverage on this thing. I mentioned about the fact about the observer, the scanner, all media for that matter. Mm -hmm. We talked about some very serious issues here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right now we are in an investigative era, if you mm -hmm. will. We're right into politics at this point in time. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, it, I think it's an elective now in, in college mm -hmm. uh, that one could graduate with an investigative degree because mm -hmm. it's, it's being sought after. Aspect of it. You would have thought that someone would have responded, if you will, to some of the issues that were that, that you were being raised, that, that were being raised. Yeah. Talk to me about well, that. Well, I'm, I'm not a journalist by right. profession or training, uh, but as uh, someone who, who certainly has been involved in both the public and private sector mm -hmm. interacting with the media, there's a couple things that I've, I've, I've learned. That number one, uh, you're right, in the era of investigative journalism, you find that these uh, publications, they will drill down very deep on one or two stories. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're leaving, living in an era of what I call the microwave mm -hmm. journalism, where people, reporters, are out to make uh, deadlines. They're trying to get an article that used to appear in print the next day, mm -hmm. get that loaded up onto the web, mm -hmm. see how many hits they can get. Mm -hmm. They're trying to make the stories as sensationalized as possible, as salacious as possible, mm -hmm. to get as many hits, as many comments as mm -hmm. possible, because that's tied to their performance, too. So on one hand, we have some acts where there's steep investigative journalism happening, and then we have, on the other hand, where a lot of stories get reported with a lack of depth, the right questions aren't answered, and it's thrown out there. 
And it's sadly because, uh, on one hand, some of the same reporters who have been recognized for their investigative journalism, mm -hmm. and one in particular is an award-winning journalist who has received a Pulitzer Prize, when he got this story about Baruti, uh, referring to Commissioner Loretta Smith as beautiful, mm -hmm. he took that and ran with it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't ask questions, he didn't talk to a lot of people, a lot of facts were left out. But I learned that the way this media community here reacted locally was because this was the same reporter who had broken another story involving the mayor raping a 12-year-old child. Mm -hmm. So when he said, Ruti, uh, called Loretta beautiful, mm -hmm. and then everybody reacted. So mm -hmm. you heard me say, you know, I yeah. show up at work, show up at home, I got TV cameras mm -hmm. at my doorstep, like I'm gonna be on 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm shocked by that. I got the media uh, uh, contacting my ex-wife. You know, I got this story impacting my son, impacting my uh, children. And so the media reaction, one, it was an overreaction without all the facts. And so when I went to one of the local medias to talk about what was left out of this story. Mm -hmm. Like what they didn't leave out the fact was that this meeting or this gathering reception that we held was had about 40 people was that uh, this was a community gathering meant to be informal and there were no elected officials invited to this event. Mm -hmm. And that was by design so we wouldn't have to get all formal. It was gonna be more of an update on what was being done in the area of diversity. And so what happens is uh, Commissioner Smith shows up, first of all, late, shows up unannounced, shows up uninvited, and walks into the middle of the room with a pair of dark sunglasses on, mm -hmm. dressed to the nines, and with an attitude. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be the person at the microphone talking when she came into the room, and I've been taught to acknowledge elected officials because they work hard to get into the position mm -hmm. they've in. Mm -hmm. So I've worked for two governors, and in the course of working in Salem, I acknowledge elected officials, and I work with two mayors, and as you've noticed, CEOs. And I'm a very, uh, I think, responsible person uh, and have a lot of mannerisms. So when Loretta came in, I did acknowledge that here's our beautiful county commissioner, Loretta Smith, doesn't she look good tonight? Mm -hmm. And somehow that was taken, twisted, turned into something to be very ugly. While the people who were there, the majority of them, if not out of the 40 people I've said before, at least 35 of them have contacted me. I haven't contacted them. They've contacted me to say, I totally disagree with the conclusion anything offensive was done here. And so I told the mayor at the time we were going through this, if he had walked into the room at seven o'clock in the evening with a pair of sunglasses on, dressed to the nine, I would have said, hey, here's our handsome mayor. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't he look good tonight? <laughs> so people made this into be something that was uh, somehow derogatory. But I still, I apologize, because I said before, I understand intent and impact. And it wasn't my intent to ob objectify her. It was my intent to give her a positive affirmation, like we in the black community do all the time, for our women and for our children, to counter the negative images mm -hmm. that continue to be put out in the media. So it was meant to be a positive affirmation, and it was taken and twisted. So some people were able to see through that, and some people didn't. But right away, folks would say, something's wrong. And especially for someone who I had known for over 20 years, who had my cell phone number, I had hers. She called me for political favors. Can you help me with this? And I always responded, was supportive. Then out of the clear blue sky, this happens. Hmm. And the only thing that changed in our relationship is that I went to work for the mayor. Hmm. And it happened at a time when the mayor, and this, uh, uh, the mayor, the county, the city were going through the budget issues and trying to decide where the money's going. And there were some hard feelings left. Uh, between the two entities based on how programs were being moved back and forth. So Loretta was one, too, who was worked up over that. So I, and, and the other part, and I don't know how much of that played into this. I can't read her mind, hmm. but some people said it was part of that. Some people said my uh, exposure was being too great. Some people said because uh, there was a lawsuit going on between Roy J. Harris and Quartet Restaurant. That, and she's such a good friend of Roy J. She was there on a mission to stir up something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I haven't tried to cast any doubt on that. But what I have said in the program over and over is I began to understand the extent of what I call uh, political drive-by because it was purely an act of political retribution by a small group of people that got thrown to the media mm -hmm. and the media jumped all over it because they wanted this salacious story that proved, didn't prove to be true. Mm -hmm. And when I've been on here three times, I've put the facts out there. I've named names. Not a single person's no called response. me. 
and said, Baruti, sorry, you saw that wrong. Baruti, you got that wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and I put it out there because I took a lot of time and did my due diligence. Mm -hmm. And I've got a lot of people that would back up everything I've said mm -hmm. up to this point. And some of the accusations and allegations that have come forward, it's not Baruti talking. Some of it's from a lot of other people who have come to me with information. So when I talked about this act of political retribution, the people who I talked about were the people who were directly involved. They were the ones who stepped up to the table to try to take a shot at me, or try to criticize me, or try to take me down. And when I wondered, so why is this? It was, became clear in each case of the three or four people they had something in the past that I did or said that they didn't like. And so, and so it, it involved David Austin of uh, Multnomah County, former state senator Margaret Carter, uh, current city council person Nick Fish, uh, entrepreneur Roy J. Harris. And those were the people who were out there who were saying something and doing everything they mm -hmm. can to blow this up. And the sad thing about this is that and this is something else I've learned. I've been in this community for over 40 years. But I really started to see and realize, unfortunately, how naive and how gullible some of the progressive liberal white folks are. Mm -hmm. Because these black folks feed people misinformation, feed information that's twisted. They feed information that's going to be self-serving for them. And these white people are so happy to have a black best friend or a black source mm -hmm. that they take this mm -hmm. and run with this mm -hmm. without doing their yeah. investigation. Yeah. Yeah. And the black people they talking to aren't even folks who are rooted <laughs> in the community, yeah, know who it. knows what's going on. Right. So they publish a story and they put it out there. And then all of a sudden, all those white folks out there, they don't have no other source of information. So they take it and run. So I would just happen to be one person who decided to expose this. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when I started looking into this last year, by the end of last year, it became very obvious. This is a small community. The black yeah. community is small. And a lot of people shared a lot of information. I was literally stunned. And at one point, I said, you know, I can just take this on the chin and walk away. And if I do that, these same people are going to continue to perpetuate yeah. this same negative mm -hmm. behavior, mm -hmm. continue to do damage mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. And what really pushed me over the brink to come onto your show and they want to talk about this just because of the number of other African Americans in this community that have been hurt and damaged by this same political machinery. Some of these same people and these same people have done the same thing to them. They have gone about defamation of character. There's been threats of lawsuits. They have stolen and and it's been unprofessionalism. There's unethical behavior that has happened. And when I take a step back, I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I've been in the community. I really didn't have good exposure for this. But the more I've learned about this, there's a lot of people in the community who have come forward and say, yeah, we've known this has been going on for years. And people are saying to me, a majority of folks saying, it's about time. It's about time somebody pulled the covers off. But we in the community, we tend to be shy about wanting to call other people out. We don't want to expose them. But I think a person needs to be exposed when they are intentionally consciously doing damage to the lives, careers, and livelihood of other folks in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let, again, I'd like, I'd, like, I'd like for you to further comment. Have you, have you done the recap as much as possible? Well, well, the other piece, as far as the media is concerned itself, what was really interesting, uh, this is the other part I would share with you, because initially the media jumped all over this because they were trying to make it salacious. Oh, this right. is it. Right. And, uh, and one newspaper, uh, uh, Will Amoth Week, came out and broke the story. And everybody, oh, everybody trying to follow suit. Mm -hmm. So the TV cameras was doing theirs. And some of the other papers jumped in. They were playing catch up. And then all of a sudden, I started seeing... Uh, the other newspapers ran an article about I had parking tickets and and I was like, what? What is this coming from? You know, and I go and meet with the reporters. And they said, well, uh, we feel like we got scooped by Willamette Week on this story. So we're just yeah. watching everything that you're doing. So we just want to be we don't want to get scooped. So we want to be able to report everything. So they went out and did their whole investigation, see what they could come up with. And they came back. I had unpaid parking tickets and I had some lawsuits directly related to my divorce. And so, but they didn't talk about the reason right, I had right, lawsuits. Right, they, right. So he's got lawsuits and made right. it look like I'm a deadbeat, right. but there's a whole long history behind that. So, so all that to say, so as a result, as I sat there and I looked at this, and, and even now in terms of, of, of them doing their background, right. and, uh, but I, and when I worked for Coates, we did a major uh, Department of Defense contracting all over the country, maintaining military bases. And as president of the company, I had to go through a Department of Defense top secret clearance yeah, sure. in order for our company to go work mm -hmm. on those bases. Mm -hmm. They went all the way back, did my background check, and came back clean record. 
And when I went to work in various corporate positions, they did their due diligence, background check, see if there's anything there, came back clean. I go to work for the, for the state, when I work for two governors, I go to work for the city, all this background check, and especially the last position I had as being the public safety elite, liaison. I'm interacting with Homeland Security, the FBI, the DA's office, all these folks and check me out, the Portland Police Department, the mm -hmm. city attorney's mm -hmm. office, FBI, Homeland Security, the district attorney, and still the newspaper goes out and all they can find are parking tickets and he's got lawsuits. It made me think about Allen Iverson when he was in the <laughs> NBA and when he had that favorite quote that said, it's just practice, you know, they talk, he's, he's balling himself in all the games and they complain he don't practice hard enough and he's on TV. It's just practice. And I'm sitting here out of all the business I've done, the millions of dollars I've done in this community and everything I've done and all they can come back with, but he's got some parking tickets. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's also a shout out to uh, uh, Mr. Roy J and all the folks he's been conspiring with to try to get background information on me to damage me. I say, it's all been done. It's mm -hmm. out there, you know, mm -hmm. so you can't threaten me, going to defame my character and going to do all this. You've already done that. You've already tried that. Mm -hmm. So, so there's folks out there, this community is small. They come back and tell me, oh yeah, he's trying to dig up dirt, do your thing, go ahead, go ahead, I don't have a problem. But I would also say this, though, to the folks who are conspiring with him. Mm -hmm. In the Bible I was reading, in the, in the book of Galatians, it said, men of faith who conspire with the ungodly are not righteous. Hmm. And I went, wow, mm -hmm. because that was the answer to a question I was trying to understand. Mm -hmm. And I'll just leave that at that. Well, look, let me ask you a question. Again, like I said, we've done the, we've done three of these these things at this point in time, mm -hmm. and they were out there. People mm -hmm. have been talking about it, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd made the point about the fact that there, there's a responsibility that both of these black newspapers mm -hmm. should have in this community because the white folks want to know what is going on. Mm -hmm. And so I, so I look at them as the interpreters, if mm -hmm. you will, of what was going on out there. Mm -hmm. Did they give you a call since then? Well, the uh, black media I have not heard directly from related to any of this that I'm has happened. I'm talking about Scanner newspaper yeah. and Observer newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. I have not heard from you, either one of them. But I will say this, though. I had a chance to attend the black publishers conference. That okay, was you did go. Okay. Uh, I went to one event, and I have a lot of uh, faith and love for the black press because that traditionally is who right. we have relied yeah, on yeah. to get our story out yes, there. Right. And it's always better when we tell our story than have somebody exactly. else tell it. Exactly. And, and I can't answer why this hasn't had more coverage. And I can't even go there. But I can even tell you with the white media, all those who were over this story, when they thought it was very salacious, they've backed off. Because for one thing, I've said I wouldn't do interviews. I wouldn't talk to them because what they was reporting was so inaccurate and so incorrect. That's, I'm not going to engage with you. And the thing I I've learned when you deal with the media, when you tell them no comment or I don't want to talk to you, then that's just a green light for them to just say whatever they want and go after you. And mm -hmm. so, so I've become a target in the media locally because I just won't engage with them. So that's one with the media. And two, the first show we did, Willamette Week put a link on their website uh, to that show. And then once I got out there and I explained what this political drive-by was, and I explained uh, what was going on with that, and, and I, I really think all of a sudden, instead of them trying to paint me as this doofus, uh, dumb black person who was sexist and, and, and doing all this, I came and spoke and I laid a lot of facts very rationally. And all of a sudden, when that went out there, that went national. On YouTube, over 1,100 people saw mm -hmm, it yeah. and the Willamette Week shut it down. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Well, hey, on that particular note, we're going to shut this down, but we're, not, we're going to open it back up in this next half hour again, and we're going to get into the investigative aspect of it. We're going to take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Prashad, your Oregon Voters Digest, and my guest today is Ed Baruthi Akari, and, and we've been talking about issues within our leadership uh, in, the, in the black community here in the Portland metropolitan area. Okay, we've gone through several areas, uh, uh, Baruti, and uh, uh, now this thing got into an investigative deal, again, doing the due diligence. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the investigative. Where, where is that at this point in time? Oh, okay, yeah, about and, and just uh, a, a quick recap why mm -hmm. it turned into an investigation was when I started trying to figure out why certain people were uh, speaking out against me, attacking me over something that on the surface was frivolous. Uh, I was very taken back. And uh, some of the names that came out, uh, all of a sudden, over and over, people started coming to me and saying, let me tell you what happened to me. Let me tell you what this person did to me. Let me tell you what they said about me. And, and, all, and they became a pattern. I was blown away by the end of last year is when I had that dilemma saying, wow, do I take this information and run with it? Because it wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. Now I had a handful of other folks who had been victimized, the same as I have. In fact, you uh, indicate yourself, oh, yes. you've Very been one so. of the victims. Very and, much so. And, and the person who was right in the middle of all this was Roy J. Harris. Yeah. And Roy J. Harris was in the middle of all of this, and the name kept coming up over and over again. And then some of the information that came to me, some of the accusations, some of the allegations, sounded that they bordered on being illegal. And I'm not an investigator. I'm not an attorney. So I figured it's not my job to try to go and figure out what's right, what's, what's wrong here in terms of legality. But what became very evident to me, and that really rattled my cage and should rattle the cages of taxpayers here in the state of Oregon, is that this is a person who it appears to be making a living off of public resources, taxpayers' dollars, and then taking those resources and leveraging them to turn around and attack other citizens in the community who are trying to hold him accountable mm -hmm. for the things he say he's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And that was my case. I was one of the ones in the various positions I've been in to say, you've got to be accountable for what you do. Right. And because I didn't go along to get along, I became a target. And now, when I started out, it was like a Gandhi said, speak your mind, even if you are a minority of one. I started out saying, I'm just going to tell the truth. And when I prayed about it, the Lord said, just go out, tell the truth. When I talked to Aunt Bebe, she said, just tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm just going to go and just tell the truth. And the other thing I realized, too, is that oftentimes uh, we in the community, uh, we become victims of retaliatory actions such as in a drive-by. Somebody does a drive-by on you and in the, uh, on the street level, somebody goes back and they do a drive-by and mm -hmm. it gets to be this and there's a lot of hurt and damage done. And I've been of the opinion, as I've worked in public safety is, is you need to speak up. Let's hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. Because once a person does a drive-by and they get away with it, they go and they do other drive-bys. Mm -hmm. And so from a, a standpoint, so what I saw happen here was a pattern of behavior where people in the community were being attacked, essentially a drive-by, because it's done under the cover of darkness. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's the saying I say, people throw rocks and then hide their hand, act like they don't know who threw the rock. Right, right, and right. so this pattern came, and Roy J's name came up over and over again. So I talked to elders in the community about how to address this and what to do. And I had elders tell me, we tried to address this before. And the response is, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm untouchable. This is my town. And he's got this facade created that uh, he can do whatever he wants. And I just, and if you look at, and I just went on, you know, when I got on my role, I'm just saying, you know, if you look at all this stuff, you know, it's easy to paint this picture of someone who is invincible and taking pictures with all the right elected officials or politicians and, and out here in this facade of doing this. But if you leave it in your wake, a whole lot of damage in the community, uh, that's not acceptable. So as a result, when you ask about where this investigation is, um, uh, I turned over these allegations and accusations to the authorities, and uh, they've continued to look into it, investigate it, and now uh, it's gone on to involve a couple of different agencies. And I encourage people who uh, feel they've been wrong or have information, they need to speak up because our young people are saying, how has this yes, gone on in the community? Very when important. we've got one individual threatening young people, say, you can't bid against me. You can't be in this line of business threatening mm -hmm. folks. we got mm -hmm. people who are having money taken away from them. Uh, and things is damaged. And I just, it's, it's embarrassing as a leader in the community to say that we've allowed this to happen. And the, and the thing that is really bad is that, is that all of a sudden he's held up on a pedestal as an example of how to be a successful businessman. Yeah, mm -hmm. And it's that 
It's that backstabbing and lying and cheating is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And then he's, at the same time, as I said, he's supposed to be mentoring people, and he's whispering in the ear of some of our politicians mm -hmm. and, and some of this. And I just said, something's wrong here. This is a terrible picture. And that's why I called him out, and that's why I called out Margaret Carter, and that's why I called out Loretta Smith. If you've got people in positions, they need to be held accountable. And when you hold them accountable and they turn around and want to say, you a snitch, you a snitch, you a snitch, you know, no, it ain't a snitch. It's about holding you accountable. Do the job you're supposed to do. And the other thing I went on to say was that as I processed this is that what I realized is that these people who want to play dirty and deal from the bottom of the deck, it's because they haven't prepared themselves. They don't have the skills to go out there and compete on the open market. And everything that you said when you were going through my bio, I'm very proud of. I'm very humbled by it because, you know, life is a journey. And those are all some of the steps on my journey. But every position I've learned something from, I contributed, I made a difference, and that's to develop me to the person I am now. But when you have people who all they know how to do is cut corners, they're not trying to prepare themselves, and the only way they know to get over is to step on somebody else, they shouldn't be held up as examples in our community of what leadership is. Very, very, very important. In fact, um, I, I, was, I don't want to remind, I would like to remind the audience again, I remember the last show that mm -hmm. we did, uh, again, we we both gotten uh, two threatened phone calls. Remember, about do, doing this show. Mm -hmm. Remember that from mm -hmm. from Florida, mm -hmm. and the guy, the guy made it very clear that he, we sort of who he was, and that um, and he was threatening us in regards to the stay clean, the impact mm -hmm. it was having on stay clean, and then mm -hmm. clean and slate, cl was clean slate, clean slate, clean yeah. slate. Yeah. Yeah. and that uh, if you guys did this show and blah 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 blah, you will be sued. So mm -hmm. we we welcome yeah. the suit. Did we? Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, we had that happen, and, and this is part of what happened. You know, uh, one of the things I said in one of the shows, I was talking about scared Negroes, and I stopped saying that because I had some people say, "Baruti, don't be saying that, scared Negroes." So I stopped. I said, "We got house Negroes uh, that are self-serving, and I ain't gonna back off of that." But the scared Negroes were those people who Dr. King said uh, he said uh, the words of my enemy will not be remembered as much as the silence of my friends. And, and, and that's where we have folks in our community who know what the game is, know what's going on, but they're afraid to speak up for a lot of different reasons, political, uh, could be social, whatever it is, and, and all of that. And so as a result, when I start speaking up, you know, yeah, you got threats for yeah, doing the yeah, show. Yeah, People say, who are yeah, you? Yeah. I got threats. People from out of town. Uh, I was threatened, you know, I was going to be sued for $50 million. Yeah, right, I right. said, bring it on. Sue yeah, me. Right. You know, sue have me for $50 sued, million. Yeah, I ain't sued, heard yeah. nothing. I ain't heard yeah. nothing. No, there was a letter sent to my attorney saying, uh, there's an investigation going. They're trying to find out. They still might sue me. And I'm just saying, well, hey, I ain't scared. Sue me. Uh, you want to defame me, talk bad about me, go ahead. You already done that. Do that. But my point I want to make on this is that when I thought about this, I couldn't help but to think about our ancestors and some of the civil rights leaders who were standing on truth and what they had to go through. Mm -hmm. Now, what if Dr. King had been concerned about somebody's going to sue him, so I better shut up and yeah, I better not yeah, do anything? Yeah, yeah. What if somebody else out there, if Harry Tubman said, well, they're going to talk bad about me, so I ain't going to free these slaves, you know, or Frederick Douglass or some of our ancestors. I'm just saying, you know, that as a people, we have to understand yes, we can't afford to walk around being scared because you don't get progress. You don't make progress being scared, you know. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to speak up and hold people accountable. But I backed off saying scared Negroes because I have been, since we first started talking about this, literally amazed at how many people have come forward yeah. and some of those people who are on the borderline did they want to get involved did they want to say something as they start seeing some other people show courage and say enough is enough mm -hmm. they have come forward more people out there are on board so this is something that continues to mushroom and at some point you know the media is going to catch up this is percolating Hopefully. right below the surface. Yeah. The media will catch up, and then they'll be falling all over each other mm -hmm. and saying who was the first to get the yeah, story right, and right, what's right, going exactly, on here exactly. and all of that. But as far as the investigations moving forward, I'm not being too concerned about it. Uh, the folks who are doing it, you know, they, they do their jobs, and, and I've just been a good citizen and shared the information I have, and I feel like, you know, let the chips fall where they may. People need to be held accountable. In fact, that's part of what's being an American's all about. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. we grew up in this country, and they're constantly teaching us it's about Truth. It's about justice and the American way. Well, there is no justice unless there's truth first. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I continue to harp on. Let's just get the truth out there. Let's act on the truth. Let's deal with the truth. Let's not deal with the charade. Right, Let's right. not deal with exactly. the facade that's exactly. being created. Let's cut to the chase, put the truth out there. And then if you got truth, you will have justice 
And that's the American way. Mm -hmm. But there's no justice without truth. If the mm -hmm. information is wrong, it's going to be injustice. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been seeing. It's a whole lot of BS and a whole lot of injustice going on to some certain folks in our community. I appreciate that. In fact, I might add, folks, this is serious because I happened to have been in one of the sessions and the state was there and they were asking pertinent questions and whatever. And um, uh, they, uh, this is a very serious situation. And in fact, they were talking about two agencies. They were talking about the fact that they were going to bring another, possibly another agency in because of the tax situation aspect mm -hmm. of it. And uh, I heard that quote from from one of the from, from the state person, from the same one saying the IRS was going to probably come in or whatever. They was going to work with that et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it is a very serious situation. And then I would challenge the media again. I would challenge the media. Mm -hmm. You know, we are in an investigative kind of a mindset aspect of it. Get in this and correct this issue so we can move on. Mm -hmm. It's affecting our young people big time, big time. Very, very important. So let's get this thing solved. Now, there are many issues that are facing black Americans here in this state to begin with. Right in the northeast Portland area, the people are constantly talk, reminded about the gentrification aspect of it. That's a big word now, aspect of it. But in all due respect, it's about monies, big time. Mm -hmm. People are coming in from back east and say, hey, uh, they're selling their homes. I mean, right in front with the African Americans are selling their homes. Yes. Yes, a, and, 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 and that's important when you're business. talking about we have limited resources. Yes. And if you have one person or uh, through one organization, a mini organization yeah. that is sucking up a lot of the state's resources right. and then not using those resources appropriately, exactly. then those are resources that could have gone to other organizations that could have been better leveraged, that could have really helped some people and changed some people's lives and made a difference. And so when we look at people who are being impacted by this, it's not just the people who are directly impacted by the negative comments and the drive-by shootings and the political retribution. There's also all those other people who are not even getting a chance to get the benefit of some of these services. So I just think we need to look at that. Uh, uh, I feel really good about all the folks who ran for office this last time, mm -hmm. and I'd say you know the outcome at the end of the day. I just hope that the conversations we've had and the yes. programs you've done it would better educate your viewing audience so we hold people accountable. It's about accountability. If we don't hold them accountable, folks are going to do what they want to do. Well, you know, it's very interesting. I, I, I really appreciate you making that point because, as you know, I ran also too. But it was, mm -hmm. it was my right and whatever. Mm -hmm. But the, but one of the mm -hmm. reasons why I ran mm -hmm. was it was rationale that I was going to be interviewed with the whole group. Mm -hmm. And naturally, uh, uh, the incumbent Loretta was there at the same time. Mm -hmm. But they never asked me a question. They never talked mm -hmm. about this issue. Mm -hmm. With Lamont Week the Oregonian, no oh. one asked a question mm -hmm. about the issues that we had been talking about over. You know, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. No issues at all. Yeah. Well, this is the thing that was so <laughs> so uh, crazy. It's because again, you get this thing starts with Will Amoth Week and yeah. they plant a yeah. seed and then yeah. they do everything to try yeah. to support their views yeah. of what the story is. Then you got some other papers pick it up. Then you get to the Oregonian over yeah. here. And when the campaign started, they yeah. sent a reporter who had been on the job for six months yeah. uh, over to uh, Teresa's campaign yeah. kickoff. And I happened to be there, and all of a sudden, I become the story. And this was so inappropriate because I feel like uh, uh, some of the local media, as you know, they tried to make it look like I was putting someone up to run against mm -hmm. Loretta exactly. Smith because exactly. it was yeah. an act of revenge yeah. because of this. And I'm seeing they're looking at us like we're so narrowly yeah, defined. Exactly. Exactly. And it was an insult to Teresa that she's ran for office before, she yeah. ran for city council, yeah. she's a business person, yeah. community activist, yeah. that she couldn't make a decision in her own right. right to yeah. run yeah. for office. And I just happened to be someone known her a long time, right. and she asked me for support and I pledge my support yes, and the media tried to take that and turn it into something else. And same thing with you. When you decide I mean, to I make mean, yours yes. and all of a sudden, oh, now Ruthie got Bruce run. I was like, what? Hey. Said Bruce is a grown ass man. That's right. Bruce that's gonna right. do what he wanna hey. do and he's gonna make his own decisions. And I just felt, but again, that's how the media sometimes look yeah. at us as black people, right. that they wanna belittle us and try to break us down to the most simplest of emotions yeah. and not having the ability to rationalize and do that. And that's why I get so incest. Yeah. And that's why I stopped reading a lot of the local media because I've seen so much. I've had people tell me for years that they don't read certain papers because of misinformation and Will Amoth Week being one of them. And I never understood it. But now I understand why people say, I just don't read the paper. Mm -hmm. And I understand, I think the advertisers need to be held accountable for, yeah, right, for, for what they're writing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so, so, uh, so yeah, so the media hasn't done a great job for this community, and I was very vocal about that. Again, I make myself a target because now, whenever they put my name out there on anything, they just want to try to tear me down and uh, try to do everything they can to diminish who I am. Well, I want to share that. That's my why you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want, yeah, I want yeah. piece of that. Actually. Okay, yeah, yeah I want piece of that. Yeah. But no, I, I, I tell you, it was, it was very interesting as I was going through these interviews. Uh, Mr. Hall was there, Teresa was there, I was there, 
And, uh, but they were never asked any pertinent question, never talked to the issues and concerns mm -hmm. of the community. Never, 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 uh, we were talking about the issues about where the dollars were being spent and whatever, but mm -hmm. they were just glossed over that peace aspect of it. And then at the end of the day, the results were, hey, she has the most background, the most skills, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And I'm sitting there saying, you got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and, the, and the other side of the deal, we never got an interview with the Scanner newspaper or the Observer. Mm. They just took the hits mm. from the Willamette Week and made and made that little announcement, mm -hmm. oh, well, the red is the best, blah, 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 routine, et cetera, et cetera. And, well, I, and yeah. that really concerns me, trust yeah. me. Well, well, you know, I, I guess, I, I, see, just, see, the I'm thing really for me, I, I guess, about this piece. I, I honestly don't don't have much a comment on the Scanner or the Observer because I'm still holding... But this is me. Yeah, this yeah, is me. That's this is me. I'm, I'm just saying, straight up with I'm still holding out hope I that am. they are going to step up to the plate and pick up and run with this story because of my belief in the tradition of the black media and that uh, story that are pertinent to our community that impact our livelihood. Well, they this, will get around to okay, it. Okay, but this is not by design, trust yeah. me. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw Bernie on my Facebook. He accepted my, my friendship piece mm -hmm. aspect of it. So I sent him a piece out from the standpoint, mm -hmm. why don't we have a, a, a meet the press kind of a deal between the observer and the, the, observer and the scanner. Mm -hmm. I sent that out. And his, I guess one of his, his cohorts called me up, and they not they called me up and basically, you know, faxed me, well, what was it, Facebook me back, mm -hmm. and was it, well, yeah, Mr. Mr. Broussard, you can get the, Mr. Mr. Foster wants to do this, mm -hmm. and uh, you can get back to him, call him up his number, because he's a busy person. I said, fine. I said, I'll do this right, and I quoted that on the Facebook, mm -hmm. but I never got a call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, again, I said, I, that's I got, an I area that I'm, I'm not getting into. I, I yeah, yeah. I, but I, I, I hear what well, you're saying. You, this is my yeah, scenario. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. I've got a business, if I you will, you. that I run yeah. on Jansen Beach. Yeah. And we don't have any African American paper there. Mm -hmm. I do have it in my shop. Yeah. My shop is called the Observer Newspaper. They're sitting right there. Now, if I had any blah, 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 no, I still feel very comfortable about, about some of the things that are being said. At least we have something. Yeah. But I want them to step up another step and take on This is a responsibility. In fact, I want them to take the lead, if you will. Do the investigative report. Get this thing out. Call you up and talk mm -hmm. to you about this issue. Yeah. This is very, very important. Very, yeah. very important. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things that you, you, we, we were talking about, we just, we just kind of did a little slight to that aspect of it. We did the open dope, the open dope, the open dope, <laughs> whatever that was all about. But that was the other thing about the boxing things. About oh, yeah. That. I mean, yeah, yeah, I know we were just kind of right. joshing a bit. What, what, any, any, it, well, well, any the additional thing, comments? Yeah, or? yeah, Bruce, we, we were having fun. If, if, if people look at the shows I was in, the first show I did in February, I had a lot of passion. And oh, I yeah. I had a lot to get yeah. off my chest. Rightfully so. Some people said I was angry. No, and rightfully some so. Some of that was there, yes. <laughs> and so the first show, I threw a lot out. Yeah, right, but and so. then the second show, people asked, there was a lot of uh, uh, clarifying questions that came to you and mm -hmm. areas. You said, yeah. Baruti, I need you to come back. We need yeah. to expand on some of yeah. this. And I talked in more detail on the second show, more expansively about uh, different people and situations. But by the third show, I had reached a point where I said, hey, you know, uh, I got it out there. I'm feeling good. And so the third show, I was much <laughs> more lighthearted and I was joking. And, yeah. and, and one of the areas that, you know, we talked about that I really got a kick out, I said the people in Portland really need to get some leadership training yeah, exactly they don't know what the okie doke is yeah, yeah, right, and, and right. i told you you know <laughs> back home the okie doke is when you uh go to buy a television out somebody's trunk of the car they show yeah. you a television in the box right right, right. you give them 200 dollars right, and you right. get home and you got a bunch of bricks in that's the box right, that's and, right. I said, <laughs> and i said here in portland we got a bunch of people who just fall for the okie doke over and over and over again not doing ropey doke and you said the rope dope yeah <laughs> then we got into the fight people. yeah so that all led to it and then i said i said well you know what i said uh I believe in supporting young people, and I believe in uh, uh, supporting the nonprofit community. Right, and I right. said, "Well, we got this. We got some people out here who who must love nonprofits because they yes. run in nonprofits and get exactly. money and doing exactly. all this." So it started out to it, it was a joke, and my family told me, "Don't even say that." Yeah. You know, see, uh, no, and, and, right. and so I said, "Well, I'm going to challenge Roy J to a charity boxing match." Yes, right, so we right, right, come right, and right, right, raise right, some money for charity, right, and right, right. and then I got on a roll, and then I said, "Well, let me get Roy J, David Austin, and Nick Fish. That's you know, right, all right. these." Uh, that's right. Uh, that's cowards, right, that's you know, right, put them right. all in the ring together. You and know, I'm the referee. Yeah, you was going to referee, and I said, let's get uh, Commander Modica from the yeah, Portland yeah, right, Police right, right, to come. Right, right, he can be the referee. Yes, yes, and, right. and I said that because he's going to need his whole utility belt, his taser, <laughs> his baton, and his handcuff and everything. Because I said, it's going to be a rumble, you know. And so I was talking all this trash and yes. and and selling all these wolf tickets. Yes. And then when I left, you know, and I said, I said, I said, let me go back to the gym and let me get in there yeah, and right, start right. working on my stuff, you know, you know, because I, like I, like I used like to throw hands. A little yeah, bit. Right, right. So I go in the gym, start right. working out, lifting right. weights, and all right. of this. Brother Bruce, let me tell you what happened. 
I caught a pain right between my shoulder blades. <laughs> it was a catch, and oh it was my. hurting so bad oh I could hardly walk. I was oh walking God. around like oh this, and I said, I hope none of these clowns sneak up on me, man. I was hurting. I was hurting. I was doing like this. And then I said, I know I'm getting old yeah, right. because the pain moved. Yes, the right. pain moved from between my shoulder blades and came all the way down my side oh my over God. here and oh settled my. in my hip. Oh. Oh. And then I started thinking, I said, man, I got to call this spike off, man. I gotta say, in, case, in case they come back and say, oh, yeah, we're going to take you up on this, you know. And so so we're officially doing it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah. fight's called off. I ain't, 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 ain't going to be fighting. I said, I'm getting too old. My body just can't take it. Don't throw uh, it out totally now because it might be okay. a future. It might be but, some futures. But, but, but let me tell you this one last quick story, though, because uh, the last time I had a physical altercation and mm -hmm. I was laughing, I, said, I can tell this now that I'm retired. Yeah. Uh, I was 50 years old. And as I said, I'm 61, about to be 62. So a little bit more than 10 years ago, uh, one of my nieces was involved in a uh, domestic violence situation. And this young man who thought he wanted to be a gang member put his hands on her. And in my family, again, growing up in Compton, when you have issues, you know, we didn't do this gang stuff. It was mono, yeah, yeah, mono, yeah, yeah, you yeah. deal That's with right. it hand exactly. to hand. You know, exactly. our allies were Muhammad exactly. Ali, and, exactly. uh, you know, Frazier. And, and, and all these other folks, George Foreman, people who knew how to throw their hands. And so, and so when this happened, we did call the police. Police couldn't find the young man. And all of a sudden, uh, one of my relatives and I, and I can't see who that relative is because that relative is still working in the community oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, and we don't yeah. want to you know, bring yeah, yeah, any yeah, negative yeah, yeah, on him. Right, right. Uh, so, so we found him and so we handed out some community justice, you know? <laughs> and so we mended out some community justice. But the thing that was so funny, Bruce, this is when I knew. I said, this is the last time I'm gonna do this because the next day I woke up my hand was swollen and I went to the doctor and they told me I broke a bone in my hand oh my and I had to put a cast on my hand and then this uh, relative of mine who was a little bit younger than me then he calls me and says guess what I broke my hand too and so for a whole summer, we was walking around both with cats on our hands. I'm the uh, deputy director at the Portland Development Commission. Oh now, my, you think oh I can my. go to work and no, tell people no, I did no. I told them I broke my hand playing racquetball. <laughs> <laughs> and the other person said he broke his hand in a car door. You know, so we had to do that. But I, I just use that as an example yeah, right, right, to right, say right, right, when right, I right. talk about taking people to the woodshed, right, 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 handing right. out justice, it's because I've been there. Right. I've done that. You know, when right. I talk about that, I, when I talk about a drive-by, it's because I know what a drive-by mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And I said before, people in my family have been both perpetrators and victims of drive-by. Mm -hmm. Since I was on your show last, I had another cousin killed in a drive-by mm -hmm. on Compton, mm -hmm. shot on Spring Street in Compton, you know, mm -hmm. in another drive-by. So it's something that I see. And I got families doing the gang stuff and all this. And so you see that, and you get to this age of life, you says. What am I going to do with this knowledge mm -hmm. information? I got to pass this on. Yeah, I got to right, let people right, know, right, right, you know, how you can do better. I got to right. tell young people. I got to right, tell my grandkids. Yes. I got to share this with the community. Yes. And it's not just about me. It's about what's best for the community. Right, As right, I said, because right. I could, you know, shrug this off, pack my stuff, and hit south and be right, at right, the beach right, hanging out. Right. But there's a sense of justice here yes. that uh, just doesn't sit with me. And so right. there has to be some justice handed out here. Well, you know, you make some good points because, in all due respect, many of these young people don't know the impact of a felon. Mm -hmm. You know, having a felon on their record, mm -hmm. they can't do anything. There's certain areas they can't even work in, whatever. We got to do something. Yeah. And now we've got, you know, as you know, the laws are coming in about the mayor, you know, signing off of the marijuana here for the state mm -hmm. of Oregon. Washington's already got it in, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. But look at the number of African American young people mm -hmm. that are incarcerated today. Yeah. What are you yeah. going to do about those folks? Yeah. It's huh? unfortunate. Yeah. What are, what are you gonna do about yeah. it? Are they gonna give them some amnesty? Maybe, mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe, maybe reconsider, if you mm -hmm. will, the those felons that the, the, mm -hmm. the they got just for selling a joint or whatever. Mm -hmm. That kind yeah. of a deal. Yeah. Give them the opportunity too. Mm -hmm. they, they're gonna forgive, if you will, mm -hmm. the way they're running with this this whole marijuana situation, mm -hmm. going in the works, this, that, and the other. Uh, I'm just saying we need to do something about the, the incarcerated these young people. What yeah. are they gonna do? There's a lot of there's a lot. Going what are they on. gonna do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you got to have that, because it all gets back to economics. And, exactly. And if you've got exactly. a felon got a on your record and yeah. you've done time, it's hard to get a job. Exactly. You can't get a job. You can't support yourself. Exactly. And you're thrown into a situation where you start looking to illegal exactly. behavior to try exactly. to take care of yourself and your family. So it all comes back to economics. And exactly. I know this when I talk to my family and talk to people in the community, uh, folks in gangs, ex gang mm -hmm. members, saying it's about economics. Just, you know, give totally, us a job, give totally. us an option. And exactly. so we need to do that. And exactly. uh, so, so, yes, yeah, so I feel that. Uh, uh, this community, you know, Portland, I've been here for over 40 years mm -hmm. off and on, went back to California a couple of times, but I've been invested here. And as you said in my bio there, I've given a lot here. I have yeah. a lot of confidence that there's a lot of things that can be addressed. 
But I also think that uh, when we see evil, we have to call it out and we have to root it out. Uh, and evil is simply when somebody is stealing, killing, and destroying, as the Bible mm -hmm. says, you know, they're acting on behalf of the devil, and mm -hmm. we have to call that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what I'm that's what I'm been trying to do, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing, and we'll continue to do. But I've continued to. Uh, I'm working on my book. Good. I told you I was going to work on good, that. Good. Uh, I'm doing my comedy piece. Good, uh, good. You're doing in that. Fact, I, I just yeah. put a comedy piece on Facebook. If you get oh, a chance you? to see I it, go on and check I it out. I just did a comedy piece. You get a chance to see that. I'm spending time with my grandkids. Uh, I'm still exercising, taking care of myself. I'm running back and forth to California, driving my old school 68 Lincoln mm -hmm. with the suicide doors. <laughs> and so God is good. Life yeah. is good. Yeah. And, yeah. and I feel blessed. And I'm uh, trying to address this, uh, this situation here, which I believe is an injustice. Mm -hmm. And again, I certainly thank you and Portland Media and all the folks who can continue to come out and support me almost every week people stop me and say Baruti thank you it's about time well Baruti we really appreciate this I'm serious man I mean coming from someone who's been here for about 20 some years now mm -hmm. in this kind of a business you know it's not a situation where I'm excited about someone having to like me mm -hmm. I put the I put it out on the table yeah. you got me and I think it's very very important that we that I, I I appreciate the fact that I'm I'm taking on that kind of a responsibility mm -hmm. And I guess the other side of the coin that, that we've not mentioned is that the folks who issue those checks, if mm -hmm. you will, to those folks that you're talking about, mm -hmm. they too need to be uh, held mm -hmm. accountable. You yes. got me? Yeah. Because they, they have their own alter, mm -hmm. alternative mm -hmm. aspect of it too. So I would say that though we're right in the midst of an election aspect right off the bat. And, and for that, I would say to you, uh, before you give up your vote and aspect of it, talk about the issues that we've been talking about here today. It's very, very important. These young people are not just gang members. They're, 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 they're sons and daughters of, of the family. They've got family and this, that, and the other. We got to get back into that family business. Get on, get back to that responsibility aspect of it. So again, thank you again, Baruti. Thank you, sir. It's been a very, very good pleasure. And folks, thank you again. And as usual, I, I did. I, normally, I would have my, my, my Marine Corps hat on, Vietnam hat on, to let those veterans know you need to get out there to the VA and make sure that the family take you out there to the VA so you can get those benefits. It's very, very important. Many of you have a PTS, but you haven't, you haven't reported in. Uh, it's receptive now, and uh, so please do that for us, okay? Again, thank you very much for being a, a part of, uh, of, of, he, of here in the community, and, uh, and do get involved and do vote this time around. People are not voting enough, getting involved. You've got to get involved, okay? Again, thank you very much, and you have a good one. I'll see you next week when we'll be here with another interesting show. Okay, again, Baruti, it's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Appreciate sir. It. All right. Also, shout out to Fred Stewart. It's a good brother. Goodness. All I, right. I, I like the way he speaks up. Sounds great. Yeah. We'll have Fred on.